Hello, everybody. It's Kate Richberg, and welcome to Free Tip Friday, the um, new tools version for Friday, October 27th. Let's see. It looks like we've got, uh, I'm just reading all of the comments. Looks like uh, Dre has had uh, an interesting morning. <laughs> awesome. Let me uh, get my um, plug for my uh, computer. <clears throat> Hang on, I'm going to keep talking at you. Um, it's been a little bit of a crazy morning over here. Trying to prep. I was organizing some things. I was trying to get a, a Halloween appropriate outfit on today. So much going on. All right. Um, okay. Let's see. Any more? Oh, and my glasses are dirty. Let me fix those. Sorry. Friday, man. Fridays. This is actually my Halloween dress. I don't know. While I'm cleaning my glasses, I'll show it to you. Right? So I've got a little little Halloween dress and I've got some, some boots. It is kind of beetle juicy. You can hardly see my red boots. I can't. Let me see if I can high kick. There we go. For a second. <laughs> oh, I might have thrown out my hip. Um, yeah, so. It's free tip Friday and this one's going to be all over the place. So, um, I don't know. I just felt like it. This pins from my mama to add to my collection of brooches. So that's what I've got there. Okay. That's, that's made them even worse. Let me, let me keep, uh, let me keep cleaning here. There we go. Um, so today, let me tell you what we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about new pliers that I've got on my board here. We're going to talk about new nun design, which I've got on my board here. And this morning I had leftovers from <clears throat> the uh, kit that I released for the Great Beat Extravaganza. So we were very excited to, um, to bring you the leftovers from that. I know so many of you have posted your beautiful looking East inspiration pieces. And you know, that kit, it might've been a record, um, for, uh, selling out for kits. Um, so I know a lot of you were like, I didn't get a kit. But, um, so I'm going to show you, I've got, I've got a solution for you. Not only these beads that I'm going to share with you today, but I'm going to give you a little sneak peek on another, um, necklace kit that I'm going to launch in a few weeks, probably before Thanksgiving. Um, our African trader was here and, uh, we spent like five hours together, like chatting and having some tea and, then uh, he had to stop because he had to say his prayers and, you know, all this. It was awesome. So we had a full international bead day in my driveway on Wednesday, I guess it was Wednesday, I think. Um, <clears throat> so we had a lot of fun, but I'm going to, uh, so I've got a lot of cool stuff that's going to launch. It's all going to launch before and around Thanksgiving. I've got this new kit. I'll share it with you. It's not going to be up for a few weeks. The Looking East kit sold out like right away, but I have new pendants that I'm going to show you. Um, not today, but I'll share with you later. So we'll be able to kind of recreate another cool kit. Um, I'm so sorry. It sold out so quickly. Um, I really only had the capacity to do a few because a lot of those beads I can't get again, but I can get similar things or I can put my mind to new things. So, um, anyway, that's that story. Um, Andrea is saying, uh, 
There it is. Dre is saying the beads that launch today are leftovers from the kit and not all of the beads from the kit, but we did have some, um, some extras. So yeah, I'm always stoked when, um, our African trader comes by, you know, he made a special trip out to see me, which was great. Um, we've been buying from him and his family for, I don't know, 30 years or whatever. So it's cool. You know, I call him my cousin. I love it. I love to have him here. So Anyways, um, let me start off by telling you, I would be remiss if I did not say, let me add um, this screen to the mix. Let me jump in <clears throat> and tell you, my friends, do not forget to uh, like, subscribe, hit that notification button. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so, so much. If you're new, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. We're so, so happy to have you. Uh, check out our Pinterest board, our uh, Instagram feed, our Facebook. Um, Ellen, who's now working on some of our social and doing all of the um, time stamping on all of our videos, she completed her first reel, and we're going to have some YouTube shorts. We're getting Emily's uh, uh, seed bead stuff up. So I'm telling you, friends, we're cooking with gas. So a big thank you and a shout out to Ellen. Thank you for um, for getting that stuff done. Um, I've got some stuff here uh, in front of me that uh, I want to share with you. So let's just jump in. First, let me actually, my friends, do this. I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, because I want to show you a few of the things here. So bear with me. Not only am I the talent, but I am also <laughs> the uh, camera woman. So uh, bear with me here just a second. Let me share my screen and do this. And there we go. Okay. So here we are at beadshop.com. The, um, website is up on the screen there. You can see we've got some spooky savings here, uh, depending on how much you spend, put in the correct code to save. Uh, and that's good through, uh, the end of the month. We also look at that. What's in the center there, my friends, the, uh, best of luck mix, right? Uh, it's missing the button. I only had a certain amount of buttons, but I had some more left over. So if you want that mini mix, it's, I love it. It's purple. It's happy. I dig it. So we have a few left that we put into the shop. And then of course you can see our new tools that are there, that six step multi, um, plier, the bent chain nose, the chisel nose, and the wire cutter with the retaining grip. Um, I also have, let me show you here. If you go to new arrivals, let me share this, uh, one for you. Um, you can see that, um, 90 degree bent chain nose is sold out already. I have more coming. I ordered a whole bunch and you folks believed me when I said I loved it. So you all grabbed it. So more of those are coming. So put yourself on the notification list for that. We also have the nylon jaw plier replacement tips and I have a video uh, scheduled. I was supposed to do it yesterday, but I'll tell you. So busy yesterday, but I'll get that done. We'll put it up. It's about how to replace the tips on your nylon jaw plier. If yours need replacing, it's super easy. I'll show you how to do that. Then we've got all this new nun stuff right here, um, that you're going to love right there. Um, and so, uh, that's our story, my story. I'm sticking to it. So, um, let me see, Drea, I know you're on. Where are the new tribal and trade beads? I don't see them on here, but I know that you'll see that and you will tell me where they are. There we go. African beads, page three. Perfect. Thank you. Let me get it there. 
there they are. Okay. So, uh, perfect. Let me go to page three, scrolling all the way down. And yes, there they are. Perfect. I don't know why they're there at the bottom, but let me share that page. Tree is, what a tree is always on it. She's there in flash sale and she's working on it. Perfect. Let me share that with you. So you folks can see it. Yeah, they should be in new arrivals. I know. Oh, it's always an adventure. So there they are. You can see they are in the, um, on page three right now of tribal and trade. They will eventually, um, be in the new arrivals. So don't worry. They're there. So you will, you'll see them. Okay. So thanks Drea for working on the fly on that. Um, I know we're, we're getting it. We're getting them, but there they are for you. All right. Let me stop sharing that and let me get to the, everything that's in front of me for now. Let's start with the pliers. Okay. Um, you know, I have, um, I don't have my wire straightener folks here. Um, but I'm going to do that special video for it. Uh, it is for the Euro tool, um, wire straightening plier. Um, it's a really easy fix. I'm going to show you how to drill them and put them on. So, uh, so don't worry, <laughs> we'll get those, but if you, and it's something that we'll always carry. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to you about, you know, when you think you should, uh, change those plier heads, etc. Okay. So, um, so don't sweat it. Um, okay. So here we go. Flash sale doesn't equal closeouts. Flash sale actually equals things that we're going to have, but not forever. Okay. Closeouts kind of equals closeouts. Um, but now they are also in new arrivals. So nothing like teamwork to make the bead dream work. Right. Oh, and friends, I also, uh, before I get to this, so I don't forget, uh, while I was getting ready for the show, you know, if you're part of the great bead extravaganza, um, and you're, um, uh, watching or getting notifications from that page, you saw that, um, our buddies at Softlex, Joan is starting a new Friday show there. She goes on an hour before we do, we go on at 10 30 AM Pacific, um, Softlex and Joan, that gang over there goes on at 9 30 AM Pacific. I caught a little bit of her show today. She was using a great bead mix, showing how to do some tassel things with the Softlex. So mark your calendars or set a reminder for that, because I know there's going to be all kinds of great tips and tricks from Joan and the team over there at Softlex. So a big shout out to, uh, those, those friends over there. All right, let's get to it. Here are the pliers and the pliers. I've got more pliers that I'm going to be adding to our, um, lineup. We've actually got some more tools. Um, I'm going to be adding actually some of my metal smithing tools that are going to go on after the beginning of the year, um, with some really cool metalworking content for you beaters, as well as my long-term, uh, metal smithing fans. So we're going to put all of that under one umbrella over here at beadshop.com. Um, and we've got a few more. We've got a leather punch debuting. We've got a metal shear debuting. So all kinds of great stuff. But these pliers are what just went up. And let me start with this 90 degree from Zuron. Um, this is the one I've been talking about it for so long. We've got it. You loved it. And now we're sold out. What a surprise, but we will get these back in. I, we have a whole bunch on order. So if you're watching this, you click over to the plier and it's sold out, put yourself on the notification list. Okay. So you can grab it. You, as soon as you get an email, 
hop on over and grab it so it won't get sold out again. But this is something that we'll be carrying permanently. Um, what I love about Zeron, my friends, is, and let me just bring this here, over at Zeron.com, they are all made right in Maine. And Maine, we're thinking about you, especially right now. Um, but there's all kinds of information on their website about their um, about their pliers. Um, they're all made right in the U.S., right in Maine. Um, and they've always been such a great um, supporter, I want to say, um, of small business, of jewelry instructors. You know, when I was doing a lot of traveling and teaching, which I miss for sure, Zuron uh, really would come through and provide tools to instructors. And um, it was really, it was great. So uh, a big thank you and a shout out to our buddies at Zuron. We're so happy to be able to add to our Zuron line. So this is the 90 degree bent chain nose. And I want to show you the difference <clears throat> between our regular bent chain, which is this, this is the German version, and this 90 degree bent chain right here. Okay. Uh, these, I mean, they both work beautifully. Um, I use these a lot for wire wrapping, these regular bent chain but if I really, really want to get my pliers right into where I'm wire wrapping, I'm going to zoom in just a touch there. Um, I think I've got a head pin here. Let me just do a quick wire wrap. I've got a bead right here too. Here we go. So if I do a quick little wire wrap, oops, get out of here, wax linen. I'm going to come in, I'm going to bend that right up, uh, right to give me a little bit of a neck to wrap around, up and over. You can watch Emily's for more details on this. Watch Emily's latest wire video right here. Um, but can you see here, now I'm going to come in, this is kind of the, the tougher part of the wire wrapping. I'm going to start from the bottom of my loop there. And I'm going to go to the top of the bead hole. Now I'm doing this with my fingers. You can also do it, obviously, with the plier. Sometimes I feel like I've got a little more control with that plier is, or with my fingers when I bring it around. Now I'm going to use the cutter that has this retaining clip on it. You can kind of see it there. And when I come in to clip the remainder of this wire away, watch what happens. You know how I usually say cover that so it doesn't hit you in the head? Watch, I'm going to come in and I'm going to clip and make sure that it's holding it right where I want it to hold it. There we go. I'm going to clip. It was already kind of off. Let me show you with this piece. I'm going to clip my wire here. There we go. And see how it hangs onto it? Just like so. So when I'm wire wrapping and coming in for that wrap, I just lay this right down and you can see where the retaining clip, it's not right at the very, very tip. It's a little further down. So you need to make sure if you want that to engage, to grab it right where that retaining clip comes. Okay. And that's going to prevent your wire from flying across the room, hitting you in the head, whatever. All right. Now there's a little tiny nub of wire sitting right there. What I do with these 90 degree pliers is I grab onto it with the tips and I press that little nub right in. And they're just like a little tiny pair of fingers that get in there for me. Okay. I can also do that with these bent chain nose. 
no problem. I can do that as well. But I really love how these are at that right angle. They're a great plier. They're a lifelong plier. They're going to last you forever, uh, especially if you take care of them. Um, and you will be good to go with these little beauties. Now, hand in hand with this plier, I also have the chisel nose plier. Can you see this? It's a chisel bent kind of, it's bent, not bent, but it's cut at about 45 degrees. So these two are my pliers of choice for opening and closing jump rings. Let me show you how that works. So I've got a jump ring here. Okay. And we're going to come in and there's my ring. This is a, I don't know, 18 gauge jump ring maybe. Now the way I like to hold this plier or this ring with this plier is with this 90 degree. See how I kind of hold it in the bend. So it gives me a lot of room to um, access the opening in that jump ring. Let me get a little tighter in here so you can see this maybe a little bit better. Okay. Then I bring in my chisel nose and I can grab it there and see how easily I can move that jump ring back and forth and ease it. Can you hear that? Ease that closed. Okay. Then I'll come in, I'll give it a little squeeze or whatever. And that jump ring is super closed, right? These are great. They also, you can turn them around. That little tip gets right in where you want it. So again, if you were trying to put that little nub of wire in there, or if you're using really fine gauge, like 26 gauge or whatever, these are great because they come to a really nice sharp taper. Um, I also like them. Remember how we were talking about this chain mail chain? Emily was using it the other day and taking the links apart with chain. Look at how I can get that chisel nose right into there and I can lift, I can lift that up, right? I've had my pair of chisel nose pliers from Zeron. They gave me these years ago. I'm going to say at least 10. When they first came out with them, they gifted me a pair, which was so kind. And I've had them forever. They're right over there on my workbench. I've used them forever. And I pick them up a lot. And I realized I wanted to use them on my bead shop show, on my live shows. But we don't carry them. So I'm like, why the heck aren't we carrying them? Let me just get into it. So, um, so yeah, so we're, we've added these. See how, like, with this figure eight piece, I've got my chisel nose right there. And it's really easy for me to open up. Easy to grip. Uh, it has kind of a nice wide, but not too wide head on it. Uh, so it doesn't mark your wire. Um, it's it's a great little little one to go. It sounds like you folks really love the Zeron needle nose. I have some. We should probably just add those in too. They have a super tapered needle nose um, that I love a whole lot. Um, so you'll see more of the pliers from Zeron. Here are my old, just to show you, this pair of pliers in my right hand versus this pair of pliers in my left hand. This is my personal Zeron uh, 90 degree bent chain nose. I've had this tool again for probably about 15 years. It's in great shape. You can see the handles have darkened or, you know, worn just a little, but that makes them all the better, right? Um, so yeah, so this one's out of my personal my personal collection and you can see still machined beautifully still in great shape okay so that's those guys there from our buddies at Zeron 90 degree chisel nose and the oh, the wire cutter with a uh, retaining grip uh, I would not cut um, hard wire with this just a reminder do not use this with your memory wire 
friends or you're going to cut a little mark or a little hole right into the heads. This I would use on soft wire, um, definitely up to 20 gauge. If it's soft wire, you can also probably work with 18 gauge, but I wouldn't cut 18 gauge with the tips. I would cut 18 gauge down here, all right, in the lower third of the plier, not at the tips. But if you take care of it, it will last you um, a good long time. Okay, so thank you, my dear Zoran. And make sure, friends, that even if you're cutting with a cutter that has uh, the retaining clip in it, just in case, always point the wire away from you so it doesn't go up and hit you in the head or, God forbid, in the eye. Okay, here's our six step plier. And I'm going to show you something real quick with this one. We're going to be using this a lot in the coming months and years. This is also an indispensable um, tool from my uh, tool bench that's on my bench. Uh, I use it all the time. And let's take a look. Let's put it through its paces, okay? So <clears throat> it has six barrels on it, and each of these barrels is a different diameter. It goes from two millimeter all the way to nine millimeter. Okay, so this little beauty, let me get some 20 gauge wire here. I use this a lot when I make my own ear wires. And as you know, our buddies at Tierra Cast, they're closing at the end of the year. We're going to miss them. So it's where we get a lot of our ear wires from, right? So I'm going to be teaching you a lot of ear wire tricks, making our own ear wires. Um, and this plier is instrumental in making that happen. Let me also grab, um, let me see, I'm going to grab my bench block and I'm going to grab just a hammer off my wall here. Bear with me here just a second. We carry the bench block and chasing hammer. If you don't have one, we carry them at B-Top. It's another kind of indispensable, really good, um, metal something tool that's super handy to have. Um, but let me show you just real quick with the ear wire. I'm going to start with this two millimeter and I'm going to give it a nice flush cut at the bottom. Then I'm going to roll that wire using the two millimeter size just there, right? So that the wire let me get a little tighter in here so that the wire just creates a nice loop at the end. And for this, I don't center it, though you can if you want. Okay. Now I'm going to come up and I'm going to use the nine millimeter barrel. It's this one right here. I'm going to place my, just depending on the size of the ear wire I want, I'm going to place my wire between the heads of the tool and I'm going to wrap it around that nine millimeter barrel. See what I've got there? Look, instant ear wire. I'll go ahead and cut away that extra, leaving it as long as you like it to be, nice and flush. I'll give it a little bit of file with the sandpaper or uh, do I have my file sitting right here? Sometimes I use a little bit of a nail, uh, like a nail file as well. Um, I got one right here. This is just a salon board, right? It's like, um, you know, it's like sandpaper, right? Except it's a nail file. So I'm just going to file the end. Get it nice and smooth. 
Now what I'll do is I'll get my plier and I'll bend that end up just a little bit. We're going to start carrying um, um, half hard wire as well. So you can make your wires that will stay like this. I'm going to put my bench block on my on my board here to kind of muffle the sound. But what you can do um, is you can come in and give that curve a little bit of a tap and see what I've done there is I've work hardened my ear wire like this so it stays, look, how that stays in place, right? So this loop is the two millimeter and the loop going up and over is the nine millimeter. Now you can also get creative here. Let me cut another piece of wire. I'm going to maybe make a bigger loop on the bottom. Um, good question from Lynn. Is the German style wire the same as half hard? It is. Most of the German style wires um, are, uh, are half hard. Um, they're, uh, they're good wires. They're nice wire to work with. So I'm going to flatten that out just a little bit. See how much larger my loop is there? Now I'm going to place my plier right in that loop, bring it up, and now I've centered that loop. Let me get a bead. I've just got a bowl of a few little beads here. Let me get anything. I don't know. <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> you could also, <coughs> pardon me, you could also use 22 gauge wire uh, for your ear wires. I mostly use 20. So see there, here's this. Now I'm going to bend this wire forward. This is one of our big oval beads. I'm going to get my nine millimeter barrel. I'm going to go up and over, straighten it out, <clears throat> cut the end of the ear wire where I want it, however long I want it to be. File, file, file and tip that end out just a touch. Now look what we've got there as an ear wire, right? We've got a nice um, round loop here and you can connect anything you want to that loop. Let's see, I've got chain here. I don't know, this isn't the right chain you're picking up what I'm putting down, right? You can put chain, like a whole bunch of strands of chain off of that. You could put uh, a whole bunch of like dangles to um, kind of all come together like a big berry or something like that, right? Um, you could put a large charm. These are our... Um, Lotus charms. Look at how nice that looks. So Curtis, this wire, it's a great question. This is the para wire. The thing that I find with the para wire is, especially their non-tarnish wires, is that they have a coating over the top, right? And that coating prevents the wire from reacting with the skin. Okay. So I have found for me personally, and you need to check it out. You can also, we're going to start adding a, a, um, sterling wire and I'm looking for niobium wire so we can make our own niobium ear wires. I hope to add that. Um, but you can, um, uh, use it. What I found for me 
is that this non-tarnished wire with the coating doesn't give me any reactions, but I am not particularly metals sensitive. So that may not be your uh, experience. Also, this is an old, old trick from back in the day. Um, oh, and Mary, thank you for uh, backing me up on that. You haven't had any issues with the pair wire used for for ear wires. That's great to know. Yeah, the, the non-tarnished, the bare copper is bare, right? It doesn't have a coating on it. So, but um, non-tarnished has that coating. Um, I also, uh, in the past, way back in the day before they had coated wires and stuff like that, I'd use clear nail polish and I'd coat or I'd dip the wire. There's also a lot of different, there's a um, protect to clear, you can dip your wires in, stuff like that. But this uh, just clear nail polish and a nail polish that's a little thicker. This was always my go-to, this hard as nails. Um, and you can just use the brush to, uh, to paint it on and let it dry. Okay, so experiment out with that. Uh, so that's that tool, the six step round nose. It's gonna change your wire working life for sure. Being able to make your own ear wires and see how I just brought that bead up into um, into the earring itself. Let me show you how this looks, you know, and I don't know if this is, you know, these are just with earrings, beads that I had kind of laying around. Um, let me file this end so I don't take my ear out. There we go. And then this just comes through, right? And see how great, how designery with this bead and everything, the earring looks, right? <laughs> Stan Hilly, that is an old school brand. Don't make me bring out my Florida water because I will, right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, let me see. Um, I'm looking, um, Argentium wire, you know, that's a great, you know, Lynn, I don't use a lot of Argentium. Sometimes I do for fusing. Um, but I, I don't always. So, um, Argentium is great, um, because it doesn't have any copper in it at all. It's, um, uh, the, um, the, co the alloy is different. So it is much less allergenic like fine silver would be, but fine silver is too, um, uh, too malleable for, for ear wires. But yeah, see, I think it looks, I can hear you out there. I think it looks pretty good. So simple, simple, simple. Six step, my friend right there. Um, I'm wearing today cause I thought they looked kind of fun. These are the earrings that Emily made these, um, the brick stitch. I thought they were kind of fun. Uh, okay. So I think that takes care of all the tools. Let's look at none. Okay. We, we love our buddy, Becky Nunn. We've known her for many, many years. She's super creative, fantastic. Um, back when I was doing the class directing for our buddy, Lisa Kelly over at B education, we did some really fun, um, resin videos with Becky Nunn. And I had the joy of, um, directing her in those videos. It was a lot of fun. So, um, a big shout out to Becky. We really love her, um, her products. So what we did is the way that Becky sells her clasps is she sells them individually. So a lot of companies, when they sell Becky, they get the loop and then they get the toggle and they pair it up. Well, we decided, and we hope it doesn't backfire. <laughs> We decided at Bead Shop that we would get the loops and sell the loops separately because these loops are also super handy. Speaking of earrings, right? These would make terrific earring components, right? Wouldn't they though? 
So here's the rounded, there's the hammered. Then we've got some larger ones here. Let me show you. I'm going to show you all the loops first. And then I'll show you, you'll see them <clears throat> up on the website. These are the larger ones. This is the contemporary toggle. And this toggle has some width to it. Look at, look at, look how wide that sucker is. These would make really great. Also, let's say findings if you're doing multiple strand um, necklaces. Oh, am I out of focus? Thanks, Drea. Let me try and get the focus back. Hopefully that's better. Let me see if I can. Is that a little bit better? Let me see. That I think is a bit better. Um, I'm sorry that my background is a little shabby. Then we have the bars. Okay, let me show you the bars. We have the contemporary, this bar, the longer toggle, and I'm going to measure them all for you so you can see them. Let me kind of stack them up this way. Yeah, I'll lay them all out and then um, and then I'll focus it again. Come on, is that better? Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can. Um, let me see if this is better. That might be better. What do you think? Oh, my mom is asking, can you make a finger finger ring with dangles? Sure. If you could, this is probably about a size six. My I wear like a size eight, but if it fits you, you certainly could. Maybe if I don't get it stuck on my finger, I can almost get it on my pinky, right? Uh, let me get these other ones out. There's the gold, the silver, and the copper. So let's take a look at these first. Then I'm going to show you the specialty toggles. Let me see if I can get also a little more light. Oh, and there's my, there's the bench block I was looking for earlier. Hang on, let me see if I can get this a little bit better. Bear with me here just a second. That's that's better, I think, maybe. I don't know. That's as good. I think that's as good as I'm going to get it today. Okay. So here's the other, the, the shorter the flat one. Okay. And so these rings, I'm going to add our screen. Um, that's a little dark over there, but that's all right. I'm going to stop fussing with it. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Bear with me here just a second. Let me add this and let me navigate over <clears throat> to new arrivals. And you can see, here we go. Uh, so here are all of the rings. So you can see the hammered toggles are there. The contemporary, which is this one down at the bottom. And then just the regular toggle ring. Okay. Then we have some specialty ones, which I'll show you in a second. The twig. But we've got the hammered toggle bar. And then we've got the contemporary toggle bar. Those are kind of the two basics. And then we've got some other fancy ones. This toggle bar that has the, the two, um, the little ends on it. And then we've got the leaf. Okay. 
So they're all there. They're also under, um, if you shop under uh, components and findings, <clears throat> and you go to uh, clasps right here, and you can sort them by type toggle bars, toggle rings, or just toggles. Okay, so there's just toggles. You can see the bars and the rings. Or if you're just looking for rings, there's the rings. Okay. So hopefully you'll be able to spot all of those. Okay. So let me remove that. Um... Curtis is saying adding a row of brick stitch to the toggle and then fringe, yes, would make for a really great earring for sure. You could brick stitch right onto this and add some fringe down. That would be great. You could brick stitch off of these guys too. That would look great as well. So let me uh, highlight this one here and let me give you some measurements. Oh, I don't like the, let me move my lamp. I don't like the lighting. I'm waiting for a bulb. One of my bulbs is burnt out. So I'm waiting for that to come in. I had to special order it. So I'm a little darker than I'd like to be. There we go. That's, that's what we're going with. Um, okay. Where's my, here's my, uh, caliper. Let's re-zero it. So the inside diameter, here's this contemporary ring right here. The thickness of this guy is about a little more than two and a half millimeters here. And the inside diameter is 17. And you can see how this toggle fits really nicely in there. So this is the one that's made for that. Now you could use this long one with the small ring if you had something, can you see the clearance between the loop and the side of that toggle? This might be better. You've got a little bit of clearance there. So if you're attaching something to this, it has to be with some small jump rings or something, right? So because if the jump ring is too large and you can't get the toggle through, then it's, it's, it doesn't work. But you may, in some instances, be able to mix it with these two. But this is the one that these are used for. The toggle bar, the length, 28 millimeters, and the hole, the, the loop size, is about 2.1. So it'll go through 2 millimeter leather cord. Okay. These guys, they're a little thinner. Uh, still a nice chunky one, 1 1.4 inside diameter of loop, 8.1 millimeter. And again, this one is about two millimeters here. Then this guy inside diameter, 9.1. The thickness is 1.7 millimeter. And the length of that is 18.8. .8. Now, let me show you. It's time. I'm going to show you the other toggle bars, but let me let me show you with this. Let me pull this up just a bit and get this back into focus. Um I told you I had a new tribal and trade necklace coming at you. It's not complete. I'm still waiting for a few parts but I want to show you how something like this toggle would work. So if I used a toggle, maybe I'd use this big one or maybe I'd use the twig or whatever, right? But I would come in with my toggle and this is leather. This is one millimeter leather. I'd silk wrap that closed or crimp that closed, right? So my toggle bar is on the end. Then what I'd do is I'd simply either wire wrap or knot or whatever 
with my loop of leather and see you could use the toggle just with leather cord. Wouldn't that be pretty? It's not the clasp that I have for this necklace that's upcoming. I have something super special. I've got a button coming. At least I think I do. We'll see. Um, but it's a great closure to do with leather. And yeah, these, this is, look at this. This took me hours to design in my driveway, but I'm super excited about it. We'll revisit it when I launch that kit. Let's take a look at the other uh, toggle bars that I've got for you here. We've got the twig, which is so pretty. That's the, the bar that has like those little barbells on the end. Here's the twig. I'm not going to pull out all of the different colors because it'll take me forever. Um, and here's the leaf. Let me get the leaf out for you right here. And let me show you what those go with. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lynn. I'm really excited about the beads I got for that necklace. I'm so, so excited for it. Here's the leaf. Here's the, the uh, toggle bar with the little uh, lines at the bottom or at the ends. And here you can see there's the twig. Um, the measurements are on the website, but this one is so pretty. This is the one that Janice used in her um, float necklace. 20 millimeters. I use it with this hammered. Look at how nice it goes with the hammer, but it also goes with the plain ring. Okay. It's a little too small to use with the big ring. Okay. This one here, the rounded also goes nicely with this rounded a wire loop. You can use it with the hammered. And here's the twig and the hammered. Look at that, how pretty that looks, right? So nice. These are all a bit small. See, and you can tell if you pull it over to the side, see how it falls through. So these big loops, these big ones, you need that big toggle, that one there. Okay. But these all go with either your hammered loop or your round wire loop here. Okay. And again, you can just choose on the website what you like because we're selling them individually. I hope it doesn't confuse you. Okay. Last but not least, let me show you. Um, these beauties. I'm just going to dump them out. These are our leftovers from the Looking East kit that I put up for the Great Bead Extravaganza. And I know, my friends, that it did sell out so quickly. I'm sorry but I did have a few leftovers for you. Here they all are. So I'm gonna make them up into a pile. This is one of each of the groupings. So if you missed it and you want the beads, yeah, I didn't have leftovers of everything, which was the problem why I couldn't make as many kits, but I do have these remaining, okay? So like I'm going to do for my upcoming kit, um, something like this really looks fan flipping tastic I think. Put on either leather cord, or um, hemp. So there's the hemp that we carry. This is distressed denim. I could also do that together, maybe. Let me see. I'm going to cut a little piece of this. Let's see how it looks. I love, love, love knotting 
with African trade beads. And I like using natural materials with them. I feel like it's kind of what the beads like. I don't know if that sounds funny to you, but I don't know. When I string like this, I feel like I'm conjuring up the spirit of our ancestors. I don't know. I don't know if that sounds weird or not, but that's how I feel. So let me show you. I'm going to just tie a knot right here. I've cut two pieces of hemp. This is really just off the top of my head. Two strands of hemp, one strand of leather, right? I'm going to cut it open over here. And some of these can go through all of them, like this. This bead hole is big. Let me go through the other side. Yep, see, that goes right through there like that. Then this slides all the way over, all the way down here. How much did I cut of cord? I don't know, a yard? Maybe, maybe a little bit more so I had enough to work with to not. This is kind of not so tight that it's going to be an issue, but I do like that movement. So let me just loop it. Let me put a clasp on here because I know I'm going to want a clasp. I'm just going to put all three of these strands right through here. Bring it around. Let me silk wrap that into place and I'm going to use hemp. If you haven't looked at our hemp selection lately, we did add some colors a while back. We have some really beautiful colors in the hemp. If you don't know how to silk wrap, because I'm doing this kind of quickly, you can go to our skill builders. Silk wrapping is one of bead shop basics that I use all the time. It's very handy for closing things up, like bringing this together, pull it through, there it goes, pull back on it here. The hemp is pretty strong. I should have checked it. I should have pulled it a little bit like this beforehand to make sure that there wasn't a weak spot in it, but I think I lucked out. Now I'm going to use, this isn't really the exact wire cutter I, or the cutter I want to use, but it's sitting here, so I'm going to use it. I want my thread and cord scissors for this, I think, but it was fine. So see here, that's on there. Okay. So I don't know. Let's just string some of these babes on. Here's so some of these have the really big holes where all the cords will go through. You can tighten make the your um, knot a little bit tighter. Or a little looser, depending on how much cord you want to see. I like seeing a little bit of the cord right here. Now here's one of these Bali beads. These have smaller holes. And I don't think it'll fit. I think this is 1.5 millimeter leather I'm using, though I really just grabbed it on my scrap pile. But I think it's 1.5. The hemp... 
Let me see if I can get one strand through. I can. There's one. Let me see if I can get two. Let me get the right cord scissor for this. I'm going to angle cut it. Let me see if I can get it through. No, no way in heck. Okay, that's all right. One strand of the hemp teak cord will be fine. I think. Hang on, there was a little knot in here that's impeding me. Hang on, there we go. Maybe I'll try it on the other strand. Yeah, this one doesn't have any. Have a knot. There we go. Sometimes the hemp cord has these little extra bits on here. Let me see if I can cut this away without cutting the cord apart. There we go. Now this will slide up. And see, so I'll just let it ride along like this. And we'll tie the knot. And I'm tying all three of these cords together as if this knot were one, right? So let me add just a couple more and I'll show you how to close it off. And I don't know, space these how you want to space them. I don't know, maybe I'll do two of the slices, Probo slices. Look at how pretty these are. I think I can get all of these through. You could stiffen the ends of the cord with some zap glue, but for the most part, I don't need to do that. I think these are okay. That overhand knot. All as even as you can. Right there. I'm going to go with this um, recycled glass in the amber and clear. So pretty. I bought some more of the recycled glass when our trader was here. A really cool color that I hadn't seen before that I'm really pleased about. The thing is, like any other, especially with the African trade beads, right? The African trade beads really vary. I, I was talking to him and I'm like, you know, I'm looking for this or I'm looking for that. And he's like, yeah, they're just, they're not, he can't find everything anymore like he used to. Um, I do have, for those of you who remember, I did the grab bags of the African seed beads. You remember those? Um, I was so excited to see that he had a few bundles so i bought them they were a little they're a little different than last time a little more of a variety of color i think um but i'm really excited so those trade bead bags are going to be up next few weeks definitely before thanksgiving i think they're really gorgeous to work with, I'm telling you. Um, and these are particular. There are some really great colors. And when I make them, I should do a video. I should do it live when I make those bags. Because I actually, I make them 10 bags at a time. And I curate each bag so that the strands kind of tell a good story. So maybe you can, if you want to make them along with me. 
I'll do a live when I'm putting them together. That'd be fun. So you can see, I'm just going through here. I'm not going to do this whole thing, but you can see, let me hold it up. You can just keep going, right? I, I This pile that I have here um, will make a nice long, long, you know, necklace if I want. But look at that. It would also make a really nice bracelet like this. I could just put the toggle on it and I'll be done. But the, and these are, we're not getting these back in. I may eventually, but he doesn't really have any of these anymore. Especially these, look at these dots, these Krobo dots right here. Um, really gorgeous. So, Yeah, so you can see this was like one of every package that we have. We're selling these singly, some of the discs. We don't have a lot of them. So we're going to sell out of these and these probably first because I only had a few left. Um, but we're selling these by the single bead and the rest we're selling by the package. So you can see with this amount of beads, one of each, I'm going to have... Um, plenty. Oh, and our buddy Allie, thank you, Allie, just shared a bracelet in the Facebook group using a solo toggle bar with a leather loop closure. This necklace would look great with just a leather loop closure, or you could put the toggle loop on the other side, right? It would look great. Thank you, Allie, for always coming through, always coming through for us. So... Um, and Drea just counted. She said, we've got 13 left of these horn rounds. Those are just gorge. I love them. Love them. Love them. Um, okay. My friends, uh, I think that's everything. Did I share everything with you? I don't have one of the mixes, but you've seen it. You've seen me show that before the lucky, um, mix, uh, in the purples, really beautiful. Um, so that's everything with the new stuff. So I will be back next week. We have, um, <clears throat> will be monthly mix drop day. Drea did the monthly mix this time and it, uh, goes for a really good cause. The best of luck mix. Thank you. Thank you, Drea. The monthly mix for November. It's really awesome. I think you're going to love it. You'll have to tune in and see it uh, on Wednesday. We're adding a, a part of what you purchase. We'll go to a really super great cause and you can read about it in Wednesday's newsletter. Also on Wednesday, since it's the first, it is the last episode of my um, masterclass with the big centerpiece necklace. We're going to close it up. We're going to bring it all to a close. Um, and then in the new year, we're going to start a new masterclass series all about wrap bracelets. So my dear, dear friends, that's it for today. I also wanted to mention um, that October 27th is our streaming anniversary. Back in 2016, we started our very, very first live broadcast with you. So that was seven years ago. So we're going into our eighth year of broadcasting. So my friends, um, thank you. I know that some of you have been here from the very, very beginning. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to have, we're going to celebrate because it's the Wednesday broadcast. We'll celebrate that big bead shop anniversary with some giveaways, which is going to be fun. Um, but we really, really, uh, thank you all of these years. I cannot believe, I don't know if you total it up, how many flipping shows that is. Uh, it's crazy. Um, 
So, uh, so we really, really thank you for all of your support because my friends, without you here, we would not be able to do what we love. So you can find all of the information on the projects and the products from today's broadcast at beadshop.com. Questions, shoot us an email over at info at beadshop and stay in touch and sign up for our newsletter. You know, when you make a purchase from beadshop, if you enjoy these uh, free broadcasts. Every time you make a purchase with us, it allows us to keep sharing and bringing you this free content. And we really, really are very, very grateful um, for you being here with us. So I will see you on Wednesday for the final episode of the masterclass. Um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Don't forget to get your uh, monthly mix challenges in. Leslie, it sounds like you're you're finishing yours, getting yours done. Um, but it's great to have all of you all here. So thanks, everyone. Have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you Wednesday. Bye-bye. <music>